And for News at 6 tonight, a woman is set to meet with the FBI to discuss her 10-year affair with a local sheriff. The same sheriff who was embroiled in a state and federal investigation over a brutal police beating caught on camera. Now come accusations the sheriff used county equipment and spent work time in pursuit of pleasure when he was supposed to be on the clock protecting the taxpayers. Dennis Ferrier is here now with a Channel 4 iTeam exclusive. Demetria, the woman would only speak to us if we protected her identity. She's a professional with a career, tons of family, and is trying to avoid embarrassing them. She described a 10-year affair with Humphreys County Sheriff Chris Davis. She says that affair ended as soon as the sheriff learned he was the target of a TBI investigation a few months ago. This is mature subject matter, and we've worked hard to be tasteful. Why then is she coming forward? She's about to tell her story to the FBI and suggested to us that the sheriff's conduct constitutes an abuse of power. Sheriff Chris Davis and the Humphreys County Sheriff's Department are facing a multi-agency criminal investigation. You'll remember an unarmed man, Darren Ring, was beaten and tasered for 10 minutes. <coughs> Later at the jail, still handcuffed, there are allegations Ring was beaten some more, that Sheriff Chris Davis joined in that beating, and that of all things, Ring was tasered again for the amusement of a female jailer. Laughing about him and everything, you know. Once you're handcuffed and you're shackled, I mean, and you're locked in a cell, what do they need to do that to you for? The three officers caught on video have been fired, and all charges against Darren Ring were quickly dropped. However, Sheriff Chris Davis remains sheriff, while criminal investigators pour through his computer, in-jail videos, interviews, and police reports. But now, new evidence. A former lover talks about her 10-year affair with the sheriff, an affair that brings up questions of possible official misconduct. I got involved with Sheriff Davis first as a friend and acquaintance, and then it ended up being a romantic, sexually involvement. The woman operated a business in Humphreys County. It was here, she said, she received constant texts from Sheriff Davis on his phone the county pays for. Pretty much daily. Uh, could average anywhere from a couple a day to a hundred a day. The texts were often about the desire to have sex, asking the woman to meet Sheriff Davis in different places around town for quick public or private sex. We would have sex, the cemetery, parking lots, courthouse, his officer's office, his office, um, a home that was being foreclosed on. So I was really leery. Um, we were trespassing, afraid. Davis is married, and so is the woman. Both are still married. But this isn't just a story about their affair. It's about what happened on county work hours. Keep in mind, if the sheriff is sending hundreds of texts with his county-funded phone to arrange meetings with this woman in the middle of the workday, in his county vehicle on county time, is this appropriate conduct? Here are a few of the texts sent from Sheriff Davis's phone. Listen to when they were sent. Meet you at the high school, 1.09 p.m., June 23rd. I'm on Highway 47. May I? June 24th, 9.37 a.m. Meet me at Barbara's place. She's at work, 11.02 a.m. Here's a sequence from one day. You want me to come get you so I can have you for lunch? 11.49 a.m. I don't really care. I just want you to hold me. Get done with your work and I will see you in Dixon in a few. 1218. Where you want to go? You want to get a room or is your place not available? 106 p.m. Look, I want to hold you. Can we work this out or what? 212 p.m. The next day, in court this minute, leaving here about 1030 or 11, running guys to Nashville to pick up cars. And then we'll be all alone. 1034 a.m. on July the 1st. Can we get a room for a while? There are other texts involving X-rated language that we choose not to share. There are also pictures of the sheriff naked, texted from the sheriff's county-funded phone. So how does Sheriff Davis respond to these allegations? What's his side of the story? Sheriff Davis is speaking through his attorney, Philip Davidson, who told us, quote, I'm not saying this did happen or this didn't happen. I will tell you this. A sheriff is on duty 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We are just going to wait and see what this woman says, and we may have comments afterwards, unquote. The woman will be interviewed by the FBI next week. She says she attempted to end the affair for a year, but Sheriff Davis would not let her go. He bullies. I was always afraid. Um, still am. He would intimidate constantly. She said she feels guilty and embarrassed, but she felt trapped and scared. I was followed several times out of the county. I would leave my job 
and um, deputy cars would be behind me all the way to the county line. One evening, um, he had wanted me to meet him, and uh, I was pulled over by a deputy on a dark road. Got really nervous because I was on the phone with him at the time, and he's like, it's okay, it's okay. He was watching the whole ordeal. He was watching. Mm -hmm. Yes. The woman says Sheriff Davis ended the affair when he found he was being investigated. Since then, they have continued texting occasionally, but the affair is over. I'm relieved that it's over, and I'd like to see it never happen to someone else. This story, along with the criminal investigation, is really starting to bother people in Humphreys County. If you look behind me, this video is of last night's county commission meeting, packed with people demanding the commission at least consider ouster proceedings against the sheriff or ask for a resignation. We will have more on that tomorrow. Dennis, thank you. If you know something the Channel 4 I-Team should investigate, send us an email to iteam at wsmv.com. You can also call our tip line with information. That number is right there on the screen.